I'm one of the historical interpreters here at Llanquay Fawr Living History Museum. Today I want to demonstrate to you quite a simple recipe from a wonderful cookery book called The Accomplished Cook by somebody called Robert May. It was published first in 1660 and it's widely regarded as what we may be able to call the earliest modern cookery book. Often, when people talk about Tudor and Stuart cookery, they like to focus on the more unpleasant ingredients. Things like blackbird pie, they used to use udders, porpoise even, but not all recipes involved such outlandish ingredients. In fact, most, even to our modern tastes, would have seemed delicious. Today, the recipe we're going to be making is simply called to fry salmon. So what you'll need for this recipe is a fillet of salmon, an orange, lemon. For frying the salmon, some clarified butter. You can use ghee that you'll get from Asian supermarkets, but if you can't get either, just use oil. Just a couple of tablespoons of red wine, a couple of spoons of wine vinegar. Now the recipe calls for the liquor of oysters. I'm not sure about you, but I don't have many oysters hanging around in my kitchen. So you can use fish sauce, or today I'm going to use an anchovy. You will also need a nutmeg, some parsley, sage, and optional extras, edible flowers, such as primroses, which at this time of year you can find growing wild. I've also got some rosemary flowers, but these are optional, so don't worry if you haven't got them. First, just peel an orange and then we're just going to slice it. Now, I don't think I'll need a whole orange in this. I think about half an orange will do. Being a 17th century recipe, even though this cookbook does give a bit more instruction than earlier ones, it still doesn't tell you exactly how much to use. You have to sort of use your intuition. Now, oranges in the 17th century most likely would have been bitter oranges from Spain. So they would have been more bitter and more sour than modern oranges. So I got rid of the peel and now I'm just going to slice it. Now today we're going to be cooking on the down half, but obviously at home just use your normal hob. And this thing is called a pipkin, made of pottery. And so it has a detachable wooden handle, so you can get it safely in and out of the fire. Now I've sat it next to the fire for a little while, so it's heated slightly. Hopefully it won't crack when it gets to the more intense heat. And I'm just gonna pop it in. And we're going to add to the pan just a little bit of clarified butter. Let's give that a moment to melt. So now we're going to add our orange. red wine. Now it says a few spoonfuls in the recipe. It doesn't say what size a spoon, so we'll just put say, about three tablespoons in perhaps. Now to this I'm going to add, I'm going to start with just one spoon 
the vinegar. I don't want it to be too sour. And then we can always adjust it at the end when we have a little taste. And just move that away from the heat a tiny bit. In lieu of the oyster liquor, one anchovy. And that should now just dissolve into the sauce as it simmers and give it a bit of a fishy flavour. And then some nutmeg. Now I'm just going to grate a bit in with a knife, but at home if you use a normal grater, I'd say maybe half a teaspoon, maybe quarter of a teaspoon would do it. You don't need much. I'll move this up again a little bit away. What I'll do is just leave that almost next to the fire. So once you start cooking it, I'd say put it on a, a medium heat and just let it simmer for a little while. Now we're going to do a nice 17th century garnish for this. Something very simple, but was used to decorate a lot of plates, something called jagged lemon. So all you do is take your lemon, slice, and just cut little pieces out of the rind all the way around so it looks almost like a little cog. Of course lemons and oranges were very expensive in the 17th century. So not only did they look pretty and pleasing and colourful, but it was also a good way to show off how much money you had. Next, we're going to fry our salmon. Now the recipe calls for it to be stiff and crisp fried. So we'll fry it until the skin goes nice and crispy. And then turn it over, just give it another minute or two on the other side. Looking nice and crisp on that side, so turn it over and just give it another minute or two to cook through. Now we're going to put some of our sauce onto the plate. and then just some rosemary flowers to give it a little bit of extra colour and there we have it fried salmon 17th century style <laughs>